Tyler Crow, the, the calendar has flipped over to May and you and I have a couple of stocks we have very, very high conviction in right now. And I think it's fair to say that for the one you've picked and the one that I picked, we both think these are our best stocks to buy right now, our top stocks to buy in May. You ready to have this conversation? I am, although I'm a little disappointed I can't buy it now that we're talking about it. I know you'll have to wait a little time. We do have a disclosure agreement with our partner, The Motley Fool, that sponsors this video. So we can't front run our ideas. So Tyler, you're just gonna have to wait a couple of days, buddy. You know what? You will be just fine. It's an opportunity for our viewers to get in before you do. I'm Jason Hall. This is Investing Unscripted. This video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, again, we got two great ones for you right here on this video, but go to our special link. It's fool.com forward slash unscripted. The Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. That's 12 great stock ideas. All you have to do is watch this little video and then check out that link. Okay, Tyler, how about you kick it off? All right. So Jason, we're going to go to a realm that I don't think you and I talk about too, too much here. We're going to get into healthcare and actually specifically into medical imaging. So the company I want to talk about is Lantheus Holdings, ticker is L-N-T-H. It's either Lantheus, Lantheus. I apologize. I've only read it. I've never actually heard somebody say the name. It's also kind of a weird name, right? What this company does is it builds radioactive tracers for medical imaging. This is actually a business that's been around for a very, very long time. Uh, its first product was approved in the 1960s. It's used for detecting thyroid cancer, bladder cancer, things like that. It's one of the go-to things when you're doing CAT scans, PET scans, a lot of the nuclear imaging and radiology things that are a little bit more advanced than you'd typically see in like an x-ray or something like that. It's kind of a business that didn't really do anything for decades. It was, it, you know, it, it's, it was very much the I can fix him stock for a long time. Bristol Myers Squibb bought it, Merck bought it, DuPont bought it, private equity bought it, and nothing ever seemed to quite work. But in 2016, it got spun out. It's a publicly traded company now, and they basically developed a blockbuster radioactive imaging unit. It's called Polarify, and it's a, a radioactive isotope that's designed to enhance the imaging when screening for prostate cancer using PET scans. So it's it's in the past two years alone, the 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 growth for this business has been meteoric. It's it's not too dissimilar to like when a biotech company develops a blockbuster drug and within the first couple of years it it shoots to the moon. In 2022 it's annual revenue grew 119%. And then in 2023, it grew another 40% on top of that. The addition of Clarify has been a, a, a godsend for this company. And it, it has opened up a lot of new ways in which the company thinks that it can unlock radioactive tracer technology for imaging as well as treatment. It has a late stage clinical trial right now, and they received fast track designation for a radiologic uh, radioactive tracer used in pet scans for tau proteins which is the uh, what in theory what is believed to be the the kind of detection unit for alzheimers so we're looking at prostate cancer alzheimers a lot of kind of hard to detect hard to screen sort of cancer or cancers and diseases for the medical community today especially with an aging population on top of that the prostate cancer imaging polarify they're also starting to use that particular radioisotope and combining it with some therapeutic agents and they actually think that they can take the imaging radioactive isotope combine it with some sort of treatment and start looking at some of the recurring cancers and when people are go into remission for prostate cancer. So it, it, there's a lot of exciting things going on right now. There's a lot of things in the pipeline on top of what you already have is an absolute blockbuster drug that is churning out record profits for this company. As far as for the screening agent, there is still quite a bit of ways to go in, in, the, in terms of this becoming the standard bearer for prostate cancer screenings. And with you know, some interesting things in the pipeline. I don't know how many of them are actually going to work. I think betting on the pipeline, that's really, really challenging. And you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. But even with those just being like the one or 2% opportunity, this is a business that is doing incredibly well right now. And it only trades for about 11 times earnings. So I, I don't think the market is fully appreciating how this new imaging agent has changed this business for the better.
That's interesting. This is one that you actually wrote a little bit about. You do a side project called Misfit Alpha. People should check that out too. I'll put it in the show notes. You can find it. I want to talk about a company that I've talked about a lot before, and it's certainly not an under the radar one, but it's one that's the stock has just been surprisingly a poor performer recently, despite a business that I think is doing really, really well. And that's SoFi Technologies. I'm going to pull up on the screen here. I'm going to share the ch stock chart over the past year. Highlight how the stock has done, talk about a couple of things that have happened, and then you know break down with the business, the quality of the business, everything going so well, why I think it's so high on my list of stocks to buy right now. So first of all, this is the past year or so. So this goes back to right here in May. We saw, this was when, Tyler, when we saw the last of the three large banks that the FDIC took over, seized assets last year was about right here. And you know, a lot of bank stocks were down a ton in the first part of the year. And then when the FDIC kind of calmed the markets and soothed those, those raw nerves for investors, all bank stocks went up. And of course, SoFi was one that went up as well. And we see here, uh, it's when it reported its, um, its second quarter results, stock absolutely popped. It had a blowout quarter, went really, really well. And then we see there's also like the, this period of, of this steady downward churn with a lot of volatility. But every other earnings period after that, including the one that we got just a few days ago, Tyler, the market has just continued to vote the stock down and send it down. The thing to me that's been so surprising about that, like I said, is the quality of the business results have been really, really wonderful. I'm going to share a couple things on the screen and talk through the results and why I think they're a lot better than the market seems to be treating them. And part of why the stock's down and then talk about why I think it's absolutely worth buying right now. So I'm just going to flip through some of the charts from their earnings report, like I said, that just came out here in, in, recent, in recent days. So first thing we see is that even though there's been some decelerization of, of growth of members, continues to add new uh, customers on a very consistent high basis. Those customers continue to uptake lots of their products, whether it's financial services products like their trading platform or banking platform or a loan. I'm going to move into that next and, and talk about lending products. This is something that we continue to see them do really, really well. And they're growing their loan book at a pretty high rate as well. And I think that's really important because SoFi has become a bank. This is kind of their core business now as a lender. And they have a really big strategic advantage against a lot of the legacy banks, because unlike Bank of America and Truist Financial and all these other legacy brick and mortar banks, they don't have a bunch of old loans that are at low yields that are a big issue. Because if you have a bunch of loans in your portfolio that are, have low yields, it really puts a lot of pressure on your cost of capital, makes it harder for you to attract depositors with above average deposit yields pay, paying back out. Since they're unencumbered with that, they're able to offer really, really high yields to depositors and they've been able to grow their deposit book a lot. And then they can take that cash from deposits and turn it into high yield loans. So they do student loan refinancing is a big part of their business. They do personal loans, they do mortgages. They're expanding steadily into a full line of banking and their net interest margin, I believe it's somewhere around 7%, Tyler, which you know is double most of the traditional banks. And at the same time, even though a lot of those loans are unsecured, which makes them riskier than things like a mortgage or an auto loan where you have an asset that you can repossess, they do tend to lend to very highly creditworthy customers. They have high credit scores, very, very high incomes and tend to work in fields where their ability to remain employed is high and that's super duper important. But I really want to get down to the key thing here that makes SoFi to me so attractive. You have a very high quality business that's growing very quickly and delivering really, really well. The reason I want to share their 2026 guidance is that 2024, this is on track to be the first year that SoFi has been profitable since it went public. Of course, it went public partly to raise capital, to have that capital to invest, to, to expand as quickly as it could. So a lot of its losses have been intentional has been aggressively acquiring customers to grow. But here's the key. Again, it's going to earn probably eight to 10 cents per share this year. So it's just breaking into profitability. The expectation by 2026 is it's going to earn between 55 and 80 cents per share. So what does 55 to 80 cents per share work out to in terms of evaluation? Here's the price today. We're recording this on May 3rd, kind of early afternoon. It's less than $7 a share for the stock. So you do the math at the midpoint of management's expectations for earnings in about a year and a half and $6.92 a share. You're looking at basically 10 times earnings, Tyler, for a bank that's still relatively small is structurally built for the environment that we're in to be able to grow in ways that a lot of other banks simply just are not 
able to be able to grow. So you put those things together and kind of like you were talking about with the stock that you brought to the table, because it's where it's priced, it doesn't have to deliver perfection on, on the potential that's out there for it. Management just needs to execute well and continue to be a well-run business and grow at reasonable rates. And at 10 times 2026 20, earnings, SoFi is absolutely a buy in my book. 